Well, hello glue troopers and welcome back to the Tarvis. And uh, we got a lot of things done today. Got started on the little Revel 170 second scale kits. I, I built the Fokker D7 naked with the decals like I used to do as a kid, just like I did the first SE5, just so I could uh, put it with the uh, comp. And I'm working on one now that I'm actually painting and everything. And it's, <laughs> it's interesting because the newer Revell kits come with a outline decal for the lozenge pattern, but it's not colored. So you have to go in and put all the colors in yourself, you know, paint by numbers. And that turned out to be fun. Uh, <laughs> after a while, you're just starting to make up colors of your own and taking liberties with it. But um, it's looking a little psychedelic. So uh, I uh, also was rigging one of the 172nd scale SE5 A's and that's just about on par with uh, masking canopies for a 172nd scale uh, model. And I actually uh, had turned the model over, I'd, I'd glued the cabane struts in place, the ones that come out of the fuselage, and lined them up with the holes in the wings. But when they settled, I guess they moved and I'd use CA glue so they weren't very flexible. So the idea was once the cabane struts were in place, I could remove the top wing uh, where I'd have easier access, rig everything, which I did. And But when I put it back, and, and I had very little tension, almost no tension, just enough to keep the uh, easy line straight. But apparently I'd made a mistake at some point, so they didn't line up when it was time to glue the wing back on. And because, of course, CA glue has no give to it, uh, they, they would snap loose as soon as I tried to adjust them. So I'll, uh, I, I did get the main wing strut X pattern done, and I'll probably just try to rig it from there after I already put the wing on it. Uh, so I'm putting the upper wing on that. I'm, I'm, I'm playing with a couple of ways to try and rig these things. Rigging 172nd scale is, is, is a trick, uh, and it's... So when I get to the 148 scale World War One models, it should be a little bit easier. I'm starting to understand why people like these turnbuckles so much, like the gas batch turnbuckles. You know, when you're dealing with the end of a piece of easy line or, or thread or something, it's, it wants to move around. It's hard to get the glue to here and get it in exactly the right place, where something like when, it's, when you have the turnbuckle on it, you can drill a little pilot hole, goes right in. Uh, of course, threading the turnbuckle is fun, but... Uh, but that also explains why some guys use stretch sprue, which may be my, my next attempt. I may just stretch some sprue and uh, it, it has to do more with access. And I'm really just trying to, to, to rig this to see if I can. It's a, more for the challenge. But these are all going to go up on the World War I deck. I still have plenty of World War I airplanes to work on. I have, let's see, I have the D7 and two SE5s on the table right now. And this is gonna take a while, uh, but I am planning to, to rearrange the shelf once I get these done with a World War I shelf, early aviation. I have this uh, uh, Deperducin, I believe it is, that'll, that'll probably go up there, you know, the really early stuff, and then the race planes and the mid-war stuff, and the World War II, and, and kind of go down like that. I've been making some room on the shelf. But this'll take a long time. I have no idea how long it's gonna take me to get through. Uh, through all of these, uh, and, and but uh, I'm sort of quasi production lining it, and I'm, uh, my desk is starting to look like the Royal Aircraft Factory. But uh, I pulled some models out of the stash. I've got all of, most of the, I think all of my Japanese aircraft that are in boxes, not including the ones that are bagged that Hans Peter sent me. Uh, I have them up here with all the zeros and roofs on one side. And then I have uh, the World One aircraft here and the race planes here. So uh, these are not, th these are just more sort of organized uh, what I want to do. But I've got so many other kits that I want to get jumping on, uh, get a jump on. I want to start on the, on the Caterham uh, and I want to start on the uh, Eagle and I want to do some sci-fi. I don't, don't want to get too centric just on the airplanes. So uh, once I get a few of these Revell kits knocked out, uh, Fortunately, they're without painting them, it doesn't take long to put them together at all. With painting them, I don't want to say they're day builds. I use acrylics, which dry fairly quickly. But, you know, putting the masking, setting up the machine, it's amazing how the time slips away. Uh, but, but they are relatively straightforward builds, and I should be able to get uh, a lot of them done pretty soon. And now my battery's dying. Check battery. Check battery. Hey, guys. Well, I had to switch everything around because uh, the... Uh, 
battery chargers on that side. So here we are on the other side of the Tarvis. Oh, by the way, uh, I got the uh, Buffalo finally finished. I'm not particularly thrilled with my build quality on that one. Of course, having lost, uh, having been missing an entire uh, section of parts, uh, it was, you know, um, not, I kind of lost a mojo on it, but I did get it done. We'll probably talk about this. It's a Czech model's first one I built, 132nd scale. And I have a lot of good and a lot of bad to say about it. it, it it's, it's definitely for the advanced modeler. I think we might talk about that on the... Uh, viewers build and also in uh, oh one of the things that I noticed was that uh, I have a Hasegawa A6M 2N that's the roof the float plane version uh, of the airplane and a Tamiya uh, kit of the exact same airplane and I thought those might make a nice comparison build I also have a couple other models like the Academy 172nd scale Tempest 5 and the old uh, Ravel Hawker Tempest and they're both 172nd scale. I figured at some point uh, those would make great little comparisons uh, with Tamiya versus Hasegawa. You're talking about two top tier companies that modern molds, you know, going loggerheads, reasonably modern molds. Whereas with the uh, Academy and the Ravel kit, you're talking about an, a new mold and an old mold, you know, kind of old school, new school. And those might make some fun uh, builds at some point uh, down the road. So I have that, you know, on kind of the, the long range horizon. And I really do want to get uh, cracking on these things. Of course, I have a really heavy work schedule coming up, so it's, it'll be as I can. So without any further ado, let's uh, get into some packages that showed up today. Uh, the first one, uh, let's see, this is from Stephen, Stephen, uh, Stephen, in Cleves, Ohio. And there is a letter, which I shall read. Hi Max, love watching your channel and all that goes with it. And as a thank you, I've decided to send you a few that I will never get a chance to build. Old eyes and small scale are beyond me now. Brother, I'm feeling your pain. Uh, I know you gave away that old Lindbergh Stenson. There was a, a collector who had a, a big collection of original models and everything. So I figured he'd give that Stenson a better home because he, he keeps them in the box unbuilt. Uh, I just thought that was a better place to, uh, for it to be. And it was gifted to me, and every once in a while, if I think somebody's going to, you know, a kit would be, have a better home with someone else, I, 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 I forward it on. Um, let's see. So, and I never heard that you got another replace it, so I have sent you my Nekomisa version of the same kit. Well, that's cool. That's wonderful. Thank you. And I, that, I, I won't have any guilt about building uh, that either. Um, uh, the Art Chester Sweet Pea Racer for your racing plane collection. I think we talked about Art Chester. He was one of the early race pilots, and he built a plane called Sweet Pea, which was, well, I'll show it here in a second. Um, both are 148 scale. In the 172nd scale, a Novo DH-60 Gypsy Moth biplane, a squadron air model Focke-Wulf FW-56 Stosser, a German advanced trainer of the 1930s. Uh, also uh, a 299 models BD-5J with three sets of decals home built jet airplane. Last kit is for your uh, missile collection uh, from Projects models, Boeing uh, cruise missile. It's the uh, Alcom ACM 86B cruise missile. Good luck with them and keep on modeling Blue Trooper, uh, uh, Steve. And well, Steve, thank you very much. Let's take a quick look at these. Okay, okay, there's the BD-5. We'll well, I'll have to. I probably have to take a snapshot of that. And uh, here's the Novo kit, the Gypsy Moth, a little biplane, and the Stosser. Uh, it, it's funny. I was just watching a uh, interview yesterday with the with the late uh, German Ace Gunther Rall, and he was talking about the trainers that he flew, and I think the FW56 was one that he mentioned. And uh, Okay, there's Sweet Pea. That's Art Chester's plane. He designed and built this. And uh, let's see. Up oh, and there's there's the Stenson. This one's actually uh, apparently more modern than than the one. Uh, this is the Pegaso kit uh, because this one appears to have clear acrylic parts, and the other one it was all like my Navion. It was all just stamped. The windows are all just stamped on there. 
And uh, here, whoops, here is ah, the cruise missile model. Okay. And I think I just dropped a piece on the floor, so I gotta go look for that. So we'll be back after this brief search for a missing part. Okay, I found it. It was the stand to the cruise missile that had dropped on the floor. So uh, thank you very much for all of that. And I uh, will get to them as soon as I can. I, I actually put the cruise missile over here since it's a real simple kit. I might see if I can put it together. Sometimes, you know, you take these real basic kits and you just kind of work on them while other stuff is hardening or firming. Or I would say a road build, but I think it'd be a little basic for that. But that's cool. And it comes with a stand, which is awesome because how, how else are you going to display something like a cruise missile that doesn't have a landing gear? So uh, this next box is from uh, Mr. Pacer up in uh, Ohio. And this just slipped off and I'm going to put that right over there because that looks like a cruise missile part. It's the blue. All right. And... Max, I say there's a reason for everything, and everything has its purpose. Purchased some new kits this year. Models I've been looking for, wanting to build. Going through my stash to reorganize things and make room. Well, I found some kits that deserve a better home. I think you will like what is in this box. Look closely at the kit boxes. Might get a kick out of what you see. Make good use of them. Chris, all right. Let's see what we got. Ha-ha! <laughs> when it raineth, it poureth. You guys may recall yesterday I had a Fokker D7 a Revell kit that came to me in the original box, which I have the comp for. And come on, stay lads, stay. Just get the plastic Okay. I'll just edit this part out probably. And voila! Another one to go with my uh, comp. Oh, okay, this is original. It says two for 66 cents. <laughs> oh, oh, those days are in the rear view mirror. And there it is, another perfectly intact original Ravel 172nd scale Fokker D7. And. Another camel. I'm going to be able to reenact the entire First World War when this is over. And ha ha! An SE5. Wonderful. This is beautiful. That way, if I really make a pig's breakfast out of all these SE5s, I can just build another photograph from two sides and deny anything ever went wrong. You know, like a government program. Want to make sure I'm not leaving anything behind. There have been one or two occasions I had to go dumpster diving because I left something in the box. Okay, that all looks good. Beautiful, beautiful. I have enough SE5s here that if I keep practicing, I'll finally get one of them rigged correctly by the time it's done, I'm sure. Look closely at the boxes, Mike. Get a kit. It's got to be two for sixty-six cents, is what he's talking about. Oh wow! Oh, they were glorious times. Oh, guys. Well, I have been building all day. I got a snoot full of glue fumes. I think I had better head on into the hacienda and kick my feet up and have sweet dreams about models that rig themselves. You guys have a wonderful evening. Take care. Hope you have a magnificent 4th of July. If I don't, because I won't be able to see you there. But if we're lucky, maybe I'll see you on the 3rd for the live stream. Guys, take care. And as always, model on. <laughs>